Thanks in part to the smash success of Peter Jackson's movie trilogy, The Lord of the Rings can now be easily counted among the most prolific and impactful cultural phenomenons of all time. Despite this, however, many fans of J.R.R. Tolkien's legendary tale continue to believe a number of misconceptions about the story's world and characters. Here are a few lies you might still believe about The Lord of the Rings and Middle-earth in general what it means to be a wizard. Okay, so Gandalf is actually technically a wizard, but he's not the kind you might be used to. He's not a wizard in the sense that, say, the kids at Hogwarts are wizards. He didn't show aptitude for magic as a child and go to wizarding school and learn spells from a dusty old book. No, Gandalf is less of what you consider a wizard and more of what you'd consider a demigod. The Valar are essentially the pantheon of gods in Tolkien's universe. It was they who sent Gandalf to Middle-earth from Valinor along with Saruman, Radagast, and two other wizards who never really showed up in any of the books. And the aptly named Sir not appearing in this film. These wizards originally existed as beings called Maiar, who acted as servants to the Valar. Before being sent to Middle-earth, they were made to look human and given magical and physical abilities beyond those held by normal men or even elves. They had existed on Middle-earth for thousands of years prior to the events of the Lord of the Rings as well, hence why they're so knowledgeable about the world. Gandalf's status as Maiar is also why he's resurrected after his fight with the Balrog. It's not some wizard spell which brings him back, but the will of the Valar themselves. Denethor's Villainy In Peter Jackson's Return of the King, Denethor is portrayed as a vengeful and cowardly madman who acts largely as an antagonist to Gandalf and Faramir during the Minas Tirith storyline. Authority is not given to you to deny the return of the king. Steward, the rule of Gondor is mine! In the novel, however, Tolkien makes it clear that Denethor wasn't driven mad by a lust for power or fear of war. Instead, Denethor was tormented by an outside influence, a Palantir. The Palantir are the magical orbs once used by the elves as a means of communication and wielded in The Lord of the Rings by Sauron, Soriman, and Denethor. Prior to the events of the trilogy, Denethor had begun using his Palantir in an attempt to ferret out information which he could use in the war against Sauron. Instead, Sauron's own influence on the Palantir slowly drove him mad. The notion that Denethor lost his mind trying to save his people brings a whole new level of tragedy to his character, something which is never really made clear in Peter Jackson's trilogy. The Isolation of Men Peter Jackson's adaptation of The Lord of the Rings might give you the impression that Gondor and Rohan were the only flashpoints in the end stages of The War of the Ring. But this is far from true. The reality is briefly alluded to in the extended edition of Return of the King, but the movie leaves out most of the details. Your kinsmen may have no need to write a war. I fear war already marches on their own lands. The appendices to The Lord of the Rings make it clear that while Sauron's army was laying siege to Minas Tirith, the elves, dwarves, and other men of Middle-earth were attempting to defend their own lands against invasion. Sauron's armies at Dol Guldur attempted to invade Galadriel's realm of Lorien three times, but failed. Meanwhile, Thranduil, king of the Wood Elves, was waging a largely successful war against the Orcs in Mirkwood. The Men of Dale weren't quite as lucky. Sauron's armies attacked the city during the Third War and thoroughly overwhelmed its defenders. The survivors took shelter in the Lonely Mountain with their dwarven allies and just barely held out under siege before the ring was finally destroyed. King Brand of Dale, the grandson of the Hobbit's Bard, was killed during the battle, as was the Dwarven King, Dane Ironfoot. Hobbit Feet At some point in time, it became an unquestionable fact that Hobbit feet aren't just hairy and tough, but are also disproportionately large. The truth is, however, that Tolkien never wrote anything about Hobbit feet being particularly big. In The Fellowship of the Ring, Hobbits are described as having tough, leathery soles and being clad in a thick curling hair, but no mention is made of their size. 
Sean Astin, who plays Samwise Gamgee in Peter Jackson's movie adaptations, appears to have been in favour of a more faithful interpretation of Hobbit feet. On the special features for the extended edition of The Fellowship of the Ring, Jackson revealed that Astin, frustrated at the time it took to apply the Hobbit's foot prosthetics, kept him up to date on his personal tally of how many days the prosthetics were applied versus how many days the feet appeared in shot.